Hello and welcome to A Nightbird. This is episode three, I'm Claire. Um, I hope you've all had such a, a beautiful February uh, as we have. Um, although I, I, I have heard that uh, we're pretty lucky here. I don't think that the rest of the world is enjoying uh, the spring the way that we are here. This is the very early spring. Um, February is absolutely unheard of to have such beautiful flowers and birds singing that we've enjoyed in this past month. We've been out a lot um, on, on walks. Uh, it's just been, it's been really unusual but really wonderful. Um, it's been a lovely month and um, <clears throat> I'm very happy that this month will be uh, so nice because my mom is coming to visit um, for a couple of weeks. Um, it's also my birthday on the 11th and I'd like to dedicate this episode to my grandmother because it's also her birthday on the 11th as well. Um, <clears throat> I was born on her birthday and uh, which was, it was, um, it was quite a surprise because I was actually two weeks early and although my grandmother had joked a lot with my mom when she was pregnant that perhaps I might come a little early, uh, I think everyone was quite surprised when I did actually arrive on her birthday and therefore I was, I was named after her. And this year would have been her 101st birthday. She actually, she died four years ago now and uh, yeah, she was 97, so she lived a full life. Um, she was very active and healthy um, pretty much um, right until the end. Um, she enjoyed reading, crosswords, um, watching shows, um, talking to the neighbours. Um, and she was also a knitter, although she wasn't able to knit in the last in the last maybe 10-15 years of her life um, because of because of arthritis but she had a lot of other hobbies and she um, although of course she was sad that she couldn't knit and that was um, a shame that we never me and my grandmother never got to bond on that um, because I took up the hobby after she had given up and uh, I never <clears throat> We lived in different parts of the country, unfortunately. My my father's side of the family are from the north. And my mother's side of the family are from the south. And we lived in London for most for the most part. That's where I was born. And yeah, it's uh, unfortunately that meant that we didn't have um, a lot of time with with the grandparents that uh, you know some other people are lucky enough to have. But she did. Um, make an impression on me with the knitting definitely and there was one occasion where she did try to teach me when we visited but I think you need this constant uh, guidance when you're learning and I did give up pretty easily after I after I you know left her her place that day and um, I didn't take it up again until later um, one thing I do remember as well is that she's very good at baking she she made an absolutely wonderful Victoria sponge cake and that's a real skill I think I've tried to make a perfect Victoria sponge cake the way she did um, and it's it's not about the ingredients I mean you can find recipes for it and they tell you how, how exactly how much of each thing you should put in there but it's more of a touch I think with a, with something like a Victoria sponge you have to to really have the touch and you have to do everything right and it has to be at the right temperatures like the butter has to be at room temperature and I've tried and I'm going to continue I'm sure it took my grandma a lot of practice as well but I remember one afternoon when she baked a Victoria sponge and I asked for a third slice I, I, I enjoyed it so much um, and I think I think she told me after the second slice that, that maybe that was enough for, for a young lady of my size and maybe she was right, I probably would have been ill but it's, uh, it, it was so delicious. Um, so I plan um, to post a couple of her recipes this month um, and I think I might have a go at making that Victoria sponge again for my birthday or for our, our birthday. 
and maybe maybe this time I can I can get it just right but I'll, I'll let you know how I get on with that um, yes I uh, I have a couple of things from my grandmother um, not that many I'm trying to research what happened to her knitting and things like that and I found like when I was at home at Christmas I found a sweater that she knitted for my mother um, I'd like to locate some of the things that she knitted and maybe show you on some episodes maybe next time I'm in England I can try and I can try and find out from my aunties and things like that um, if they have anything that she knit um, but I do have this little brooch that she once gave me which I'm wearing today to uh, to hold up my shawl which I finished um, yes which brings me on to what I have on my needles I'll start with my shawl, um, which is my first finished item this month. Um, as you can see, I'm wearing it, and I wear it a lot. Actually, it's I'm I'm pleased with it overall because it's warm. Um, I love the feel of this yarn. I'm happy to end the story of this yarn, knowing that I have this is the third time I've knit something with it and uh, unravelled it. Um, Somehow this yarn, although I love the colour, I love the feel, there's, I just love everything about it. I couldn't, it doesn't knit up, it doesn't um, perform in the way that I imagine ever in any of these projects, um, including this one. Um, it turned out, and I, I wear it like this mainly, I, I kind of wanted to, to make a shawl like that sort of probably goes over your shoulders and maybe isn't quite so long here. Um, but I think I, I went on too long with the garter stitch part of this, um, this shawl which gets increased and increasing longer and longer. And uh, in the end I didn't have enough yarn to do the lace as long as I would have liked. So it's quite wide and not kind of deep in, uh, as deep as I had envisioned. Um, but that's okay. And I kind of like wearing it like this. It, it's, it's, it's really comfy and warm. And um, another great thing about this knit is that it has been a great learning experience for me. Um, I, I feel a lot more confident with lace after this project. Now I told you last time that I, I'd only knit a couple of the rows of lace and I had made a mistake and I was getting a bit disappointed. Um, but I learned this time that, okay, that of course the first one or two rows of the lace are the most difficult because you don't have anything to guide you. You can't see where you've gone wrong. Um, but when once you train your eye to know what you're looking for with lace and know how it should look, you can see if you're off and you can see pretty quick and uh, it flowed. I, I was able to watch TV, I was able to even really talk to people while I was doing this, this lace pattern and it's made me realize that maybe I get trapped in my own mind a little bit with, with lace patterns and I don't, I think it's very important to learn it and to, to know what you're doing and get into the rhythm of it and this is the first time that that's happened for me so it, that was pretty exciting. Um, I'm, I blocked it um, I'm not that happy with the way that it blocks. It's uh, yeah because of the silk and the cashmere in this in this yarn. I think it's it's not as um, kind of easy to mould perhaps as some other yarns might be. Um, and these points that the cobweb pattern has, the beautiful cobweb that I used, um, I was able to stretch it out to those points with pins as it was drying, but they didn't really. Day. Um, but I'm happy with it like this, with this it's sort of curly at the ends um, and yeah, I'm, although it may not be perfect exactly, I'm very pleased with it. So that's my first finished item. The second thing that I have finally finished is my family socks, which I'm wearing all the time. I am so pleased with this project because Luca, Hendrik and I, we all wear these socks very often. We wear them in the house mainly um, with our slippers 
Uh, they're very warm. They're very comfy. I <clears throat> I like the idea of family socks. I don't I don't think it's too corny. I I think it's I think it's really nice, and uh, I think Luca enjoys. He he gets it that we're all wearing kind of similar socks, and he enjoys that. So um, yeah, these are the ones that you haven't seen. Those are mine with the cable going at the back. Um just to show you them all again. Um, Hendrix with the cable going down the side, a different type of cable. Um, and the little Luca socks also with a little cable going down the side. Um, I'm really pleased with those and perhaps um, perhaps next winter I'll do the same again on, on this little pair of family socks. Um, but it's something I want to have on the go, a pair of socks. I really enjoy knitting socks and they're nice sort of to go to projects, I think. Um, so I have started another pair um, because a friend of mine has a birthday, a male friend. I, I don't know that he'll like, he would appreciate a, a face cloth in the same way as some of the female friends who had a birthday last year. Not that men don't use face cloths, but not only that, I kind of, I, I, I knit quite a few face cloths last month and um, I wanted to do something else this time. So I've just I've just done the cuff and it's, I'm just knitting plain socks um, because I'm going to try this uh, fish lips kiss heel this time. Um, I had a look at the pattern and I was a little put off because it just seems like it looks like a really long and complicated set of instructions. Um, but that shouldn't put me off because I know that often things seem that way and it's not. But you know, the, you have to get out cardboard and draw around your foot and th that might be a problem as well because this is for a gift. Um, but we'll see when I get to the heel. Um, I definitely am very interested to try that heel and I was, uh, I was very happy um, when someone gifted me, someone very kindly gifted me that uh, that pattern. Um, so I'll let you know how I get on with that. Um, oh, another finished item that I forgot to tell you about. I started and finished this month. This was also a big uh, kind of um, milestone or breakthrough in my knitting uh, this month because I was very angry and frustrated with felting. After two felting disasters, I felt perhaps that felting was just not for me, and um, I was probably thinking I don't care if I never felt anything again. Um, but um, I have a well. Luca already has a pair of slippers, and I'd knitted him these felted slippers, um, which didn't really turn out exactly the way I'd planned. Um, because I used the wrong weight of yarn. Um, I was a beginner at felting. I just didn't really know what I was doing. Um, and they, they turned out way too big. So I've put them in a drawer and maybe they'll fit him next year sometime. But they're, they're just not that perfect, you know. And then I thought, you know, I'm going to try this pattern again. Um, saying as I need another pair of slippers for him because I want a pair of slippers that he can keep at his grandma's house and, and one for here. Um, so I thought I'm just going to give it another go because I had, and I had this all along, you know, the way I, I bought this yarn maybe two, three years ago. It's a, an alpaca. I was amazed to find in Aldi, and Aldi is is a, a discount supermarket. It's, it's I don't know if if uh, all of you guys know this, uh, but it's it's not a particularly classy place. It's not the kind of place that you expect to find alpaca. Uh, they often do when they do yarn, it will be like in a in a pack together. It will be an acrylic in a pack with some plastic knitting needles, you know, for beginners, um, that kind of thing. Um, so I was really amazed when I saw this alpaca. Um, and it was it was a bargain. It really was 100% alpaca and very cheap. So I bought um, a whole pack of it in brown and another pack in grey. Uh, but when I got it home, I I unpacked it and it's very scratchy. It's very scratchy and and has a lot of kind of raw fibres in it. Um, and I never really found a great 
project for it. I made a hat for Hendrik out of it once and he said that it itched him and yeah. Um, and then I thought, isn't this the perfect yarn for making felted slippers? Which it totally is. So here is um, the little pair. They turned out absolutely perfect. They fit him perfectly. Um, the only thing is I had to make the buttons a little tighter because I think I blocked it maybe a bit too wide here, but that's fine because that means I can adjust it, you know, that when his foot grows a bit I can move the buttons a little bit more forward. Um, and actually this sort of scratchiness and rawness of the alpaca really suits this project. Um, so I am super pleased with these. I um, it's one of the fav my favourite things that I've made and I would definitely use this pattern again. It's um, from Pick and Knit. Um, she, she makes mainly felted uh, slippers or, or, and shoes and uh, she uh, obviously loves felting and uh, there are some other really nice things for, for children and also for adults um, on her website. and. Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep this definitely as a as a to-go-to project for slippers for Luca. And maybe even gifted to some friends. Um, they're, they're also very easy and quick to make as well. As long as you don't make the mistake of using these, what they call, I, I tell you the mistake that I made is that I thought that you had to buy wool that was for fel felting. There are, in Germany, it, you know, I don't know if it's the same everywhere else, but there are yarns that are actually, it says this is fel felting wool. Um, but you don't have to do that. I mean, any wool will felt. Um, I know that's obvious to most people, but uh, I don't know. As a first time felter, I just felt like I, used to, I, I should get something that actually says this is for felting. And so I ignored that it was the wrong weight. Um, I didn't even really realize it. Um, but I actually find that alpaca felt very well, so I would recommend if anyone tries such a pattern, alpaca is perfect. Um, yeah, those are the things. Uh, oh, and that yeah, there was this, which I showed you last time. And I haven't made much progress on this, this scarf to go with the mittens that I knit for Luca. And the reason I haven't continued much with this project is is just because he hasn't needed a scarf. It's been beautiful sunny spring weather so I just kind of put it on hold um, but I should I should finish it it's um it'll it will do for next winter and uh, yeah and it's a lovely yarn and uh, it's nice to have two things that match together so a big thank you to everybody who took part in the glove along our first knit along you all made some really beautiful things. Um, uh, congratulations to the winners. Um, they were Margaret and Teresa. Um, I was I was really impressed with the gloves that people made. Um, I was impressed with Teresa's gloves um, that she designed herself. Uh, they were really nice. And um, I think Margaret made also the knotty gloves, which I want to talk about um, because that was the design that I had planned to make for this for this glove along as well but I don't know how you guys found these knitty gloves but I did not enjoy knitting them at all I I found it and I don't know why because I I enjoy cabling and I enjoy knitting gloves so I am um, I wasn't really sure what it was that was so um, it just difficult and and just unenjoyable about knitting these gloves but I um, I was after knitting the first glove with the, with the cable I just thought oh and not only that I then looked at the cable that I'd done and it just did not look nice you know and I I carried on knitting a few rounds getting to the fingers and then I thought I need to think about this because if I don't like the way it looks it's not going to look nice on the other glove either and I'm not going to like these gloves. So I had a little think about it and decided that I needed to rip them back because they it just maybe it was because I was using alpaca and it was kind of um 
you know it's it's more hairy it's it's uh, so the cable kind of looked a bit messy really um, so anyway I ripped them back and ripped them back to the cuff and thought about it and in the beginning I had actually um, changed the the pattern slightly anyway because it was too big it was too large for my hands I've got quite small hands so I thought you know instead of taking a glove pattern and then changing it and why don't I actually just design my own pair of gloves it really can't be that hard you know um, and so I then just I just decided to think of a design and I and it, this was where I started to get excited because this was really inspiring um, I thought of a design and uh, I quite like um, pearl stitches I quite like what you you know designs made with pearl stitches I don't think there's enough of it um, but I did something pretty simple um, just sort of dot stitch pattern for the back of the hand um, and I, I really like the way that it turned out this is actually the second glove though um, because I think when you're designing your own things is probably always so that uh, you you hit kind of problems or you um, you see things that you didn't see you know so the first glove was not very good and I, I got to this point with, with the first, so I haven't finished. Um, I got to this point, and I don't even know why I went as far as to make these fingers. I um, I knew at this point that things weren't good, um, and it was the thumb gusset really. I anyway, I changed my mind about the thumb gusset, and in, instead of ripping this back straight away, I thought I will just keep this here in, as an example while I'm knitting the second one um, and that really helped me to get the second one right and now I can now go back and rip this one back and make it like the the second one so in the end it was just a really rewarding and exciting experience and uh, all I have to do now is rip this back which is a bit of a shame but you know sometimes that's the way things go and unfortunately I'm gonna have to rip it back right to the ribbing because yeah, the thumb gusset starts here, and yeah, I, I really, I'm much happier with the way that I did it on this glove. Um, so yeah, I'll get those finished this month. Um, and on to our next, our next uh, craft along. I, I think I'll say craft along because I would, I would really like to do some kind of craft along each month. Now it might just be a knitting thing, or it could be, you know, we can do whatever. Like we'll see, we'll see what comes up. Um, but it, I, I find it really fun to um, kind of join in with people. I don't have a knitting circle, and I just love the idea that we're all knitting something together. Um, it doesn't matter how many of you join in. Um, it's it's so cool as well that we're all in different places in different parts of the world um, anyway for me that's just really exciting and um, this month I kind of yeah so it came to the end of the glove along and then I thought I'd like to do another one I'd like to do this every month but obviously I didn't talk about that last time and it and these ideas are kind of just evolving as we as I go along um, so I'm thinking it's better if I can warn you or, or tell you about uh, what kind of knit-alongs are going to take place, what kind of craft-alongs are going to take place so that you can plan it. And uh, that's maybe one of the problems with only doing a monthly podcast. So I've decided that I will, um, I'll announce the next knit-along as well um, each month so that then you can just get an idea as to what it might be and you can think about it and um, I'll then keep it updated in the thre threads in Ravelry and on Facebook and so on and then you can uh, you can decide if you want to join in. So anyway that obviously didn't happen this month. Um, I did make a thread maybe um, in the last week of March about what kind of knit along you might like to do next. Um, and um, yeah I, I, I spoke to a few of you and uh, you 
uh, there are a couple of people who really uh, wanted to um, to join in with this um, and it was kind of inspired by my gloves because I'd ended up designing those gloves I thought I would really like to do a knit along about design um, I think anyone can do it I think anyone can design um, as long as they've been knitting yeah for if you're a complete beginner perhaps you know you need to learn the basics first but I think that designing is part of learning and so it doesn't matter if you're not that experienced I mean I certainly am not you know a knitter of, of great experience but I definitely feel that um, I can design and I and you you just have to know um, what your limits are and I don't expect anybody to do anything complicated I think everyone should just do something on their level um, or you know not even that just you know depending on how much time you have um, I like I said before I, I'm not the kind of person who enjoys patterns that much and I think that um, designing myself as well helps me to understand other people's patterns um, so I have a yarn which actually is the kind of yarn that you would find it very difficult to to put to 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 match to a particular pattern so it's perfect it's the perfect yarn to design your own um, pattern for um, I absolutely adore this yarn it's it's so um, I hope you can see the shades of red here it's it's intense and there are real subtle changes in the colour. Um, it's very curly as well, which I think is, you know, what makes it so difficult to put to find the perfect pattern for. Um, and I really want to knit something with this. It's by um, New York City Handspun. Um, she makes really kind of um, more eccentric um, kind of art yarns. And I love her work. I think she um, she makes some really uh, Gigi. Her name is um, she makes some really uh, unique things. Um, <clears throat> so I'm really happy to be knitting with this, and I am also so far very happy with the, the design that I thought of. <clears throat> um, so I had to think with this. Um, it's not that easy. I mean, I don't have any experience of knitting with this type of yarn, so I really had to picture it um, knit up. And I, I also, I, I, I took, I, I, I imagined that I think, I thought big needles would be a good idea, and I do actually have some big needles, and I don't know where they came from, really, because I have never knit with, look, look at these, they're just massive. What size are they? I don't even know if that makes sense. Maxi pin two, it says. Maybe when it gets to a certain size, they say um, the I don't know. I've just I I never even have found out anything about big needles because I just I don't tend to knit with them. Um, but I didn't want to knit the whole thing with these needles because I think it's a bit much. Um, uh, so I also have, and again I haven't knit with these. I mean these are still chunky. They're not as chunky. These are a size 13, it says here. Um, and what I decided to do is I would like to knit a shawl with this because I just think it's... I know it's crazy because I have red hair and, you know, that I'm knitting something so red, but I actually like that sometimes, like, when there's a lot of, you know, it's a slight clash, but it kind of... it can work. It can work. Um, so I'm knitting a shawl. And what I decided to do is, um, instead of putting any kind of pattern into this, because I don't think this yarn is the type of yarn where you need to... I don't think it would show up to put any kind of lace or um, or any kind of particular texture. So I'm alternating between these um, two needles. So I'm doing eight rows of these needles and then four rows of the massive needles and just knitting front and back on each side. And that's it, that's all I'm doing. It's um, It doesn't take a genius to design this pattern, um, but I'm very proud that I thought of the idea and that's the, that's the point of this knit along. So I hope 
that you that some of you want to join in. Um, I'm excited to see um, anything that you guys come up with and um, to sharing ideas and uh, I'll show you how I'm getting on with this one. I felt with the glove knit along that I it got I mean it was halfway through the month and I decided to rip them back and then I just I didn't have anything particularly inspiring to say until until the last the last minute when I decided that I would design my own. Before I talk about this um, pattern ebook review and, and giveaway that I want to talk about today, I really want to thank Lou, who, who is Lucy and Nitz on Ravelry, because she is the one who pointed me in the direction of these um, of these designers. Um, thank you so much, because uh, she, you you must know exactly the kind of thing I love. This is uh, these patterns are. I, I love the photography, I love um, every single item in this ebook and uh, it just it, I just think it's beautiful. It's a, it's a book um, of designs for children and women and uh, designed by two friends, uh, I think, uh, the, the two, two women, um, Nadia and Solène and um, the book is called Emitouflage, I think that's how you pronounce it. Sorry, um, my, uh, English speakers are always terrible at pronouncing French things. Well, not always. Anyway, I am. Um, but I think that's uh, that's and it's a word which means it. It says uh, that it's more of a feeling. Um, it's um, it's kind of hard to describe the meaning of this word. But um, in the beginning of the book, it describes it, and I think. I understand that it's more of like the feeling that you get when you're knitting. Um, I plan to cast on two projects from this um, from this ebook this month. Um, <clears throat> I just need to go yarn shopping first, which I'll do when my mom gets here, um, because my mom has actually started knitting, so she she would like to come yarn shopping with me and. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased that uh, she wants to have a go, so um, I'll keep you updated on that as well. Um, yeah, so the first one that I want to try is this one, it's called Softly You. Uh, I think it's really cute, obviously this is for Luca. Um, this one is actually designed by Solène, I, I didn't do this deliberately, but I've picked two designs. One is designed by Solène and the other one by Nadia. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, I think, although it's getting warmer now, I think it's always for the evenings, you need a, a light jumper like this. I also think that this one is, um, I think I'll be able to, to knit this one with no problems, with, without too many problems. The, the other one is a little more challenging, but I'm up for a challenge. Um, uh, this cardigan for me. Um, Again, as, as it's coming up to summer, I like to wear dresses and I and I like to wear a cardigan with these uh, dresses. And uh, I've told you as well that I have goals to um, to actually make a dress. So I would kind of like to make this cardigan to match the first dress that I make. So um, I'm looking forward to going fabric and yarn shopping and picking something that goes together and uh, that's my plan for, for these patterns. Um, the rest of the patterns in the book um, I probably will cast on at some point. I really, really think this is a, a lovely, um, imaginative, dreamy um, pattern ebook, and I'm really, really, um, I'm really, really pleased that uh, that Solène, who I, who I uh, wrote to, um, wants to share this with me and with you guys. Um, so I will I will put up a, a Ravelry thread um, when this episode goes out um, for one of you guys to also win this book and I hope that you also enjoy the pictures as much as I do and that uh, some of you also enjoy knitting these designs. So my other uh, crafty endeavours this month um, I told you that uh, Hendrik had a birthday, I, I told you that last time and um, I couldn't show you at that time uh, because I didn't want to ruin the surprise for Hendrik. Um, but um, he's very pleased with the 
um, it's an iPad cover that I made for him. Um, he'd mentioned to me when he got his iPad that he didn't really like the case that it came with. It kind of looked cheap. It was made of this sort of fake velvet kind of, it just didn't look very nice. Um, but of course it's important that it does have a protective case. So I, I took that, I kept that in mind and I thought I, you know, I'll make, I'll make one for him. Um, it was challenging to choose the fabrics because I, um, as you can see from the kind of patchwork uh, the things that I, I like, these colourful um, and vintage prints and so on, that doesn't really go with this iPad cover that he wants to take with him to work. Um, so I needed something a little more conservative, something, um, but I didn't want it to be too boring, I didn't want it to just be plain colours. So I picked I picked a plain colour for the main for the outside of the iPad case, um, and I chose this for the lining, which is kind of it. It reminds me of a sort of gentleman's handkerchief type uh, print, and I thought that was quite appropriate. Um, uh, I had different ideas about how I would do the closure. I thought about a zip. I also thought about putting a flap with buttons. Um, in the end, I decided on on a winding piece of because I wanted to actually use this uh, this lining material as as a feet, you know something on the outside as well because it was kind of a shame that it was only on the inside. Um, and I wanted to make a matching pencil case, so I wanted them to sort of go together. When I came to the pencil case I decided uh, still that you know this wasn't getting showed off enough so I didn't want maybe I thought it was a bit too much to make the whole thing um, with the uh, gentleman's handkerchief print so I just kind of I did one side with that and the other side with the color that I used for the iPad and uh, yeah I put in some some useful things like like a little stapler and things like that and some pens and things that he might need um, and that way he can just sort of fold it up and then wind this around and the same with the other one I just I kind of like how quick that is um, for me that's I, I think maybe some people wouldn't like this sort of it's a bit too casual but uh, um, it's a simple design and I, I do have to say that of course if you use this type of closure that's also a lot easier than putting in a zip but actually it's, that's not the reason, I, I don't mind putting in zips to be honest. Um, but I would definitely recommend that if you guys are beginners at sewing, um, it's a good way to start to, to make something like this with a simple closure. Um, because yeah, I mean there are challenges that come with, with putting s certain types of fastenings on. Um, but um, I will, uh, I'll, I'll let you know how, I, how exactly I made it on my blog. Um, it's really not difficult. So if you guys would like to make one yourself, then you know you can you can follow the design on uh, on a nightbird. Um, another thing that I wanted to show you is uh, is my granny squares um, because I've talked to a couple of you about about crochet and granny squares and uh, um, yeah, crochet is one of those topics. You know, not everybody out there likes crochet. Um, especially knitters. Um, I'll tell you how I feel about it. It's um, I can sort of understand both views. I mean, I think that crochet has its has its uses, and uh, I I don't tend to go for um, crocheted um, items of clothing. I I think I don't know. It just to me. I've well, I've never seen a, a crocheted garment which I have really liked. Some hats are, are okay, um, but I wouldn't crochet a hat, and I probably wouldn't crochet any kind of clothing. Um, but what I love crochet for is for edgings, um, for lace. I love doilies. Um, so that kind of intricate crocheted lace, um, I think, is really stunning. It's something also that my great grandmother did. Um, and we have a couple of things that, uh, I mean, I never met her. She's my mother's grandmother. 
and uh, one thing in particular that I think is really amazing that she made was a lampshade which I think it, I, you think you can maybe imagine that uh, so it's a lampshade and underneath is, is uh, fabric and then on top of that there's a crochet, crocheted uh, lace design and then it falls into little beads uh, around the edge and it's really stunning I'd like to be able to crochet something like that um, but the best way to start with crochet is granny squaring. Um, I guess not everyone likes granny squares. I, I do. I love them. I think that a granny square blanket is classic. Uh, it looks great and it's a great way to start. Um, that's the first thing that I ever crocheted and I didn't even know what I was doing. I, I didn't know the names of any of the stitches I was doing. Um, I just um, so I just knew how many times you wrapped it round. I watched a YouTube video and I just copied what they did on there and um, I didn't know that I was doing a double crochet or a... It's another thing with crochet, it's very confusing as well because the um, English pa it, the English names for the stitches are different to the American ones. I find that really confusing because in fact I kind of have a lot of exposure to, to American uh, instructions and so on. So now I'm totally confused. Uh, um, I'm supposed to, I guess, uh, know the English ones, but I think I'm actually more familiar with the with the American ones. Um, I think, honestly, it's better, um, especially with granny squaring, is just don't think about what kind of stitches you're doing, just learn how to make a granny square. Um, the only problem then is, yeah, because I'd like to... I'd like to make uh, doilies, I guess. I need to I need to kind of learn how to follow crochet patterns. Um, this is the blanket that I'm working on. So some of it has been put together. Um, but I'm, I've got a lot of squares that I need to put in as well. Um, and that's kind of been put on hold for a while, I have to say. But something that I am currently working on, which is nearly finished, is I'm making some cushion covers, um, and uh, I don't know if you can see the colours, it's sort of purple and um, blue and green, and uh, I just need to, I'm going to put a little edging on it and put the back in cotton, and um, so yeah, any of you who, who would like to, to learn to, to do a granny square, um, I don't think you need even to know anyone who can show you. I think, okay, it always helps, but if you don't, then just look on YouTube. There are plenty of tutorials, and you'll get it in no time. It's pretty easy. Um, and, um, yeah, I would love to see how you get on with it. Um, and I would also love to hear from any like anybody who's very good at crochet and can make doilies and so on. Um, that's something that I would love to do and I'm a bit scared, but um, I will definitely try it at some point this year. So I want to tell you about the things that I'm enjoying this month, um, entertainment wise. Um, I, I actually haven't read a great deal this, this month. We've been outdoors a lot um, and I haven't found those quiet moments to read. Um, but uh, I have been staying up late knitting and to accompany my knitting I've been watching some TV series. Um, yeah, I finished um, with Downton Abbey and then I started watching Call the Midwife and uh, I finished series one of that. Um, it's kind of heavy though, I mean I enjoy it very much um, but I, I, I feel I, I can't watch it, binge watch it in the way that I watch some other shows. I, each episode I need to kind of have a think afterwards and um, and to, yeah, it, it brings up a lot of, um, I don't know, feelings and so on, which I love, but I'm, I'm pacing myself with that. Um, yeah, and for some reason I started to, to get nostalgic recently and I, I started thinking about TV series that I used to like um, and one of those was My So-Called Life. Now I don't know if any of you guys remember it, um, it's actually 20 years ago that this show was on TV and I can't believe it, um, but uh, I'm enjoying it very much watching it again um, and yeah it's, um, it's 
funny to watch it from a different perspective. Uh, I know when I watched it as a, a young a young girl, I I very much related to that character Angela, played by Claire Danes. Um, yeah, there's a shy, awkward, redhead, um, trying to get through all the you know dramas that occur in your life at that time. Um, and I'm enjoying watching it from that perspective as well. It's making me think about those times thinking back but at the same time I'm able to look at things from the parents point of view and to see it in a different light as well now as I think the world has changed a little since then as well but um, I'm yeah I'm really enjoying that I'm sad because I know that there's only one series I'm halfway through I know that it's going to end on a cliffhanger and we never did get a second series of that show but it's definitely something I very much enjoyed then and it's nice to be watching it again um, I've also, I've ordered some books because I, I kind of miss, um, I, I'm enjoying the short stories but I really want to get into a novel, um, so uh, I'm looking forward to a few things that have, um, that I've ordered that should be coming in the next week and uh, I'll talk about those next time. But one of them is Anne of Green Gables. Now. This was a book that I also completely forgot about, and it's also part of this nostalgia feeling that I've been having recently. Um, but also, it's appropriate now because it's something that my grandma actually introduced, introduced to me. She enjoyed those books very much as a child, and, um, and then she recommended them to me. And I also, um, I also read them and enjoyed them very much. I think the whole series, but um, I've just ordered Anne of Green Gables, which I think is the first book. Um, and there, ha there was also a TV series of that, which I might have a go at watching as well while I knit. I think that'd be a nice thing to, to knit along to. Um, so yeah, on that note, I, uh, I want to thank my grandmother again for the inspiration, um, and uh, I wish you all a wonderful March. I hope you enjoy this wonderful spring weather that we're having, um, and um, I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great month. Bye.